Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the tail end of our time together. And what better way than to ask Madame Ojiambo just to come and give us her final reflections and thank yous as we close. If I can ask that we just take our seats so that we can give her a little bit of attention as she gives us those closing thoughts. Madame, it's over to you. Great. Um, thank you. Um, it's hard again to come after an award-winning panel <laughs> since medals are distributed here. But look, thank you everybody, first of all, for your time and for your attention. I know, I think this is the second edition that we've done of Uniting Business Africa. And it's really great to be able to have um, this audience. We, I know we have a great virtual audience. I want to begin with some thanks, first of all. Uh, let me begin with our hosts. And I know, uh, voila, oh, there you are. I was going to say in true form, you might have been outside working on something. Voila, thank you so much to you and your team, to Chairman Ayman, all the support that you've given us towards hosting UBA here. Um, to all of the local networks, uh, the African local networks of the Global Compact, your support in terms of showing us and showcasing the fantastic business membership you have has been absolutely incredible. Uh, we have uh, teams that have supported us as well. The events team, the communications team, thank you very much. To all of you, programs team for content, uh, the Africa team as well for the work that they do, global operations. It really does take a village in the very African sense to bring things together. And I think I just want to commend you for all of your collaborative efforts. I wanted to reflect on a few highlights. I think during the course of the sessions today, we've heard of a lot of, of opportunities for the African continent. A lot of these are already in progress, I always say. What we need to do is to accelerate and to enhance and to scale. Uh, and I think in all of the discussions we've heard at COP, that certainly is it. The recognition that this as the African COP is a great milestone, uh, the recognition that perhaps what is needed is more focus, more innovative financing, more collaborative programs and projects, uh, ways in which you can look at uh, initiatives more interlinked. You know, we're looking at water and resilience, but that has an impact on agriculture and supply chains, for example. How do we take a more holistic view to all of the challenges that we do have? Of course, key things are important for the African continent, the energy transition for all of our economies that are, you know, either at the edge of on the cusp of becoming manufacturing-based economies, wanting to develop into middle-income-based economies. What does this energy transition look like and what does energy security, energy security mean for the continent? At the same time, acknowledging all of these strong sources of geothermal that we have and of green energy that we can exploit. One key key topic area to be discussed. The climate crisis lies at our heart of all of us. Uh, my hope for this COP is that we do get to a, a place where we can be able to balance the, the challenges of mitigating and the high emission uh, reduction uh, work that must be done, particularly amongst the G20 countries, as we call for, but also mitigate um, adaptation, resilience, and loss and damage, as we know, are key on the agendas going forward. For us at the Global Compact, some reflections on our Africa agenda. Yesterday, as you know, we launched the Africa Business Leaders Coalition. Again, a huge thanks to all of the teams that brought that together. Um, a group of, in an initial group of 60 business leaders, uh, demonstrating first their own company climate commitment, but also calling for accountability for all of the global commitments that we made on climate. This is just a start. Um, I know that the coalition will grow to a lot more, but more importantly, we want to see the role that they'll play in supporting key issues in the climate debate. Climate finance was one that came up significantly, and there's lots of other opportunities to explore. So ABLC is one that has been big for us. Um, the second bit that I just wanted to talk about is the overall work of the Africa strategy, and I must congratulate my colleague, Jovi, who sits in the middle right in front of me, for her leadership in terms of driving the Africa strategy forward. We recently opened our hub, uh, in, in Nigeria, um, and that will be fully staffed very soon. We're looking to engage more with our local networks, grow and build capacity, um, diversify our programming, and really work closely to recruit the top 10 com companies in every country. That is our desire, because we firmly believe that with the strong business leadership we've seen exhibited here, if we can replicate that everywhere where we work, we will surely have a force to reckon with for the African continent. Um, you know, we coined this term in September about unstoppable Africa. I really do believe it is something that we should aspire towards. For Africans, friends of Africa, people doing business in Africa, 
um, everybody who supports the African agenda. Because as we always say, when Africa wins, the world wins. Thank you so very much for joining us at Uniting Business Africa and wish you all the very best for the rest of COP. Thank you very much, Madame Mojiambo. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have refreshments in the lounge uh, next door, just on my right. So please uh, do join us for those refreshments. And once again, uh, thank you very much for your engagement. Uh, from me, Nozipo Shavalala, thank you. It's been great. <laughs>